because now any form of mental block that might exist or any you know nerves of any point they get quite swiftly dealt with once you get that big performance at an event. But what I'm quite interested to going into this first map is it's going to be Tempest Shrine, which is, I believe we've seen them, I, I believe in their winner's final, they, they played this map as well. Um, but what I'm sort of trying to get at is this has been a good map for both teams. I know just before we, we just saw No Lives Matter um, versus Top 10 NA have a super dominating uh, performance on this map specifically. But if they did in fact play it in winners, like I'm, I'm fairly sure they did, our number balls would have won that. Um, but I think this is one of those maps where it is super important for that first minute or so to make sure you get that first obelisk. Obelisk B is the one that you want, you need it for your team, or your job is a lot more harder uh, to do. And that's what a lot of teams seem to be favoring right now. You need to make sure that that first 20 seconds, that first exchange on that soul goes your team's way or you're going to have a rough time. But I do feel like this is, if history is, has shown us anything really it's that this is one of unlovable strongest maps by far um, because whenever they've been playing on this map either offline or online now when we saw them at denver and we're seeing them in online qualifiers it's one of their most successful maps in general unlovables have gone into this tournament definitely being the favorites but as this is grand finals you never know but um, just to remind some of you guys that may have for every reason just joined us and are watching this north american action but didn't quite catch the european tournament this is a double elimination grand finals long story short it basically means that Unlovables being on the winner's side means they have to win one, two out of three. And with uh, No Lives Matter being on the loser's side, they have to reset the bracket by winning a one, two out of three. And then they have to win a second. So essentially, Unlovables have to do half the work, as is their reward for being on the winner's side. There's that Berserk already popped. We said that was quite a common strategy with our Doom Slayer players, is just to pop that straight away and try to get those early frags before people can get the right weapons. But it's not going to quite pay out this time. Seacap is here ready trying to contest this. But no, knocked off the map and forced to suicide. Oh, great start for Seacap, unfortunately. No lives, though. They've been able to control this on. There's plenty of heads left to try and fight for this. The danger, though, is that Brick is very weak indeed. Be very careful now, trying to go through. If he dies this close to the obelisk, he's practically handing it to the other team. Decides to go through, so I respect that. You know, we can see that most of our lovables were there, ready and waiting for him to drop it off. So he had no choice, really, but to go for the reset. But it was also the combination of Brick with the tactical suicide, where at the same time that he forced the reset, he also killed himself to make sure by the time the fight's going to take place towards Ooh. the middle of the map, he's going to be nice and healthy, fresh off the spot. However, though, all that time, I don't want to say wasted, but all that time stalled has given Unlovable's time to not only get the quad damage, but also end up taking the first obelisk anyway. There's Seacap that manages to salvage this quad damage. And even though No Lives Matter, they tried really hard to get that good start. And they were as patient as they needed to be. It still didn't work out for them. <laughs> that was some very tactical pillar hiding placement right there. Kept him alive just long enough it came with a nice double. I mean, that must have been a very scary situation for the receiving end of. You have a gauntlet out. You know someone's shooting at you with a quad damage um, lightning gun. And you can hear it too. And you can hear it, you can see it, and all you have is a thin pillar to just try and keep it between you and them. That was so smart. Bot mode, I mean, I, we've seen so so constantly with bot mode, like how well he can not only you know, be one of the best fraggers on the team, but a real nuisance, you know, like his, his movement and his, his picking when to go in and out when he has the soul, you know, sort of slipping aside and trying to sort of sneak the soul away. He does it consistently with Anarchy. I know that's kind of... Also, his teamwork with Kane there, beautiful. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. They work really well together, these guys, definitely. Still though, nice strong start from Lovables. 40% climbing already. 0% on some of their lives matter. Oh, they both missed their rail, and this is like that, that final shot rail to seal the deal. Pit comes flying in, but they trade it one for one, because uh, bot mode comes sweeping in with the rocket. But no lives, they need to get some sort of drop off, because with no percent on the board so far, it looks like it's going to be unchallenged for now, but again, I think that's because the power-up's going to be spawning in a few seconds. And this really is that match where you've got to contest that power-up. So I give trying to keep my arms late. We will survive here. Frank's going down. Oh, and Kane with a point blank rocket. Sen is getting that protection on this Doom Slayer. This is going to be tough as now he tries to advance to this obelisk and steal the soul back. He has overstacked armor and plenty of health. This is going to be one tough guy to take down. Well, knowing that before that point, No Lives Matter had been yet to take a single ounce of percentage on the board. I think seeing as during that sequence they got 14% before they were able to fight for that and get the soul back. I definitely think Unlovable's call to action was, let's just fight for the power-up, let them put their resources in trying to drop the soul, kill them before they manage to close in any space, and then use the power-up to just get it back, you know, right there. And they've now been able to drop things off. 
had the protection. It lasted long enough for them to at least get the soul back. However, they didn't really substantially climb it very much. Pit no, now they didn't, the get, they didn't hold onto it for very long, really, to be honest. And now already, uh, it's about enough to bring it back. But bot mode from behind it swoops in. Wow. Die anyway, but did drop down quite some significant distance. Psygib flying in. That Berserk punch and C-Cap. Gonna get a couple of frags before he himself dies. Psygib just trying to get through, but dies as well. Sen, we are just trading frag for frag here. As the soul is unfortunately stuck in the middle of the whole thing. Now bot mode should be able to drop this off before he goes down, but Brick, that was a close range rail. One of those risky rails that if they miss, you know, that's hell to pay for it, but Brick goes in for the reset for another time. I think it's a good call. If they're struggling to take the fight near the Obelisk, taking the fight in the mid screen of the map is so much more viable. What well, Effortless was ready and waiting to pick it up anyway. Well recovered. Ooh, took a damage below. Oh, and that's going to be a follow-up. Unfortunately, getting hit on the top of that doorway kind of sealed his fate. Yeah, the second he the second he got railed at the bottom of that jump pad, he was knocked a little bit higher than I think he'd like to be. I think even he knew he was guaranteed to die there. There was no way Sam was missing that shot. Like it being chased. Oh no! Actually, no, the Berserk just ran out. He's still very low, but he has a lot of teammates here. With 10 health, all they really need to do is sneeze on him at this stage. But he takes out bot mode at the very least, so he's going to get one little bit. The problem is, yeah, with 10 health, there's no way he's able to fight for that power up without going down. It's allowed them to have a little bit less heads on the point, so Seacap comfortably seizes the quad damage. And now they're going to make another assault on this obelisk. That quad damage rocket, no one's going to be surviving that for sure. Oh, a pit! It's that nice, relatively distant super shotgun bot mode coming in. Recover anyway, getting another nice frag. He is outnumbered but has quads, so it doesn't really matter. That does mean that there needs to be some teammates, though, trying to take the soul instead. If you've got quad damage and you're actually trying to sit on the point and capture it to get the soul, you can really sort of pepper those rockets down and just get some of that uncontested damage that's hard to really dodge. Because you've got to be within close proximity of the soul of the obelisk to obviously take the soul away. Oh, nice nice midair. midair. Yeah, bot mode really just playing switched on at the moment. Getting a lot of crucial hits in those situations. Now on Lovables, starting to pull ahead once again. They were very close in percentages, but this one defense here is doing a good job of just putting that gap even bigger between them. Flying Doom Slayer. My word. A lot of damage coming through these rockets all from a distance. You have to be so careful contesting for that soul when there is this much rocket fire coming through. Actually forced to divert some of his attention. He was looking towards, well, I think it was actually Brick from the point there. Um, the second he sort of took some damage from behind, he instantly snapped to turn around and before he could even finish turning around, someone else caught him from the other angle. Pit has got the soul again. I've got to say, it's, it's looking pretty close. Actually, it's looking a little bit closer than we had seen before. At least it was before. I mean, that one that one capture from Unlovables has put a significant gap between them, but provided Unlovables can hold on to it at the same time, I have no doubt we can see it go even closer again. However, I, I've been to stolen be honest, away. I feel like part of me is like, you know, Unlovables are really hoping that's going to be some protection appearing right here because realistically they've only got 13% left and they're going to win the round. If one of their highly stacked champions manages to get protection, all they really need to do is just bully. Now, however, now they've got the soul. They're going to work together to drop this one off. Brick has got access to the protection. So I wonder if they're just going to sit there and wait it out. I, I think he's hiding. Yeah, Kane was going for it. Oh, he got discovered. But the suicide. Oh, sort of like it's looking a little bit worse for wear there. But that's the call, right? You know, again, it's, it's using the uh, sort of reset mechanic to your advantage. If the opponent has protection or the opponent has the power up at any degree, just sit there with the soul and hide. And the second you get detected, then obviously cause the reset manually. The entire time it took for the protection to be a thing. The second that the reset occurred and Brick picked up the soul, the protection's now vanished. You know, it was pretty much removed from play entirely. But Brick on the respawn immediately able to capture it again, but there's someone meeting him there, but he has the teammates. They are here, ready to stop. His team from dying and Brick is able to drop it off again. No lives matter. Starting to build the percentage more. I really enjoy watching Tempest Ride because that, that, that reset mechanic just opens up so many possibilities an extra layer of depth to an already complicated game mode at high level. But no lives matter, I've been able to use it to really establish again themselves back into this round. They were down like 40-50%. This single capture, had they've basically managed to even it out almost now. A few seconds away, but it's going to be a nice long-range rail there from Sen. Brick. Oh, and another one too. And another one! Three frags for this railgun! Sen on fire! 
now you can see No Lives Matter, they're just fresh off the spawn, so how much of Gullimore they have to try and take this fight. Brick does come off slightly better. Really forced to use his injection. A little bit of damage from behind, but not enough to kill him or slow him down. You always reach this stage near the very end of the map where Anarchy starts reaching that slightly above 80 HP point, where at the very least, yes, you're going to be taking a lot of damage from elsewhere, but at the very least, you'll take, you know, you can tank two rails in one life bar without needing armor. And I think that's really important. Not necessarily for this map, because rails, they're going to be prominent, but you're not going to be as vulnerable to them at all times as you will be on some more open maps, but still. Well, how many inside oh, give? Man. He has the quad damage, but he is here trying to contest, but they managed to get around the corner. If bot mode can get here uncontested back, he might be able to still survive, but he is getting pursued by quad damage. He's trying to meet him there. Can he get there safely? Side gives waiting for him, and he just perfectly executes the trap. And the second he catches him, one shot is all he needs for that super shotgun. I mean, let's, let's not count these guys out. No, they've got to get 2 more percent. They could totally win this, but bot mode with the gauntlet. How did that punch miss? I'm not sure. He's going to be kicking himself for that one as it has given Unlovables back control of the soul. They are here immediately trying to get it back, but Brick falls down. This is really bad for No Lives Matter. They managed to bring it back so close, but just as fast as they were able to get it. It looks like Unlovables, three of the four of them are here. No doubt the fourth is on the route, but Saigib going to get one crucial frag. Pit getting another one, but Kane taking out Pit himself. The soul has been stolen away. We are 98 to 98%. Brick is holding onto the soul, but he's taking a lot of damage. They need to pile in as fast as possible, and they've been able to meet him in the middle. If they try and prevent this from climbing up, they might be all right, but with 1% left, they can't lose a single frag. They pile in, but the frags are going to be in no life mass favor for now. A bot mode swoops in and gets taken out himself. That is likely to be the round. I think it's going to be. They're a bit too far away. No, they're, they're here the contest, last second. They died immediately. They're still contesting. That's going to be one. We are just going gauntlet for gauntlet right now. Zephyrus is just killing them all one at a time. They're still contesting. Bot mode got one of them. He got another one. That's the Berserk mode. Come what is through. going on? Bot mode goes down, but there's plenty of teammates. Those three frags he got, but now he messes up the pass and it lands back down. That is such an execution error to make at this stage. But they are outnumbered. They have the advantage here. They have the soul. They need to get away, but no, it's been stolen away. This is just such a back and forth on this obelisk. What is going on? Can they reach it? And it's still in play. Ccap tries to survive. Here comes Kane. Bot mode as well. Two of them at once. Kane gets a plasma trail. This is not over. No, Lozmet, they have the protection, though. Brick has the protection. He's coming through. This might be what seals the deal with this protection, this anarchy. So much stack, he is just not losing any damage at all. Three of them are dead. The one left alive has been forced off, and that is going to be it. That buys enough time. And an 11-minute round in just round one of this grand finals. Oh, my days. I think the second they got that protection, that round was over, you know, because the saving grace, I guess Unlovable's only hope there was to consistently pile in. And in many ways, actually, that, that was a very, very, very intelligent read, or not read, sorry, um, play that Brick decided to go for protection um, because ultimately Unlovable's had no choice but to constantly pile in and make sure that Obelisk was staying contested. Otherwise, they were going to lose that 1%, they were going to lose the round. So if, any, if even one of their teammates split the attention to go for the power up, that was one less champion to pile in towards the obelisk, and he would have won the round. However, if Brick just simply runs in there and takes the, the protection, that's going to be the round guaranteed because they're just not going to be able to survive long enough. That was a uh, pretty much best case scenario for No Lives Matter after what could have been quite a vital mistake. You know that that alley where bot mode and a uh, Saigib, it was uh, the quad damage punch actually. Looked like it kind of missed at a really random reason. I feel like the elevate, the sort of the natural elevation in that hallway kind of made it look like Doom Slayer actually just sort of punched Anarchy's mohawk rather than actually Anarchy himself, but they recovered. Still though, to start this off, not only do they have the soul, they got the obelisk choice they wanted, and they also have the quad damage. This is a perfect start. But no lives matter. Going into the next round after, again, a very, very just dominant back and forth there. Very tense, very stressful, I think. But I feel like No Lives Matter are going to be quite naturally pumped after a round like that. You know, it's one of those, you know, one extreme or the other, when it's, when it's pretty much 99 versus 99%. If you win that kind of exchange, now, 11 minute rounds, 10 minute rounds aren't particularly common. You know, it's, it's always a little bit before then in Sacrifice. If it can go on particularly long, then we do start to see that kind of timer take place. But if you lose that kind of round, you know, it's a lot to shake off and it's a hard pill to swallow. But if you win that kind of round, I mean, you're buzzing, right? And just like that, no lives matter. They've been keeping that momentum and they are riding with it constantly. They've got 45% in less than two minutes. Uncontested. Unlovable's having a very hard time in round two right now. This is pretty much 50% done in under two minutes. A great result for No Lives Matter so far. Just flipped it completely on its head now.
for half the work done. But again, it, I think a, bit, a big part of it is just in that team effort, you know. I feel like our Unlovables, they're not quite as coordinated in this round as they were before. I feel like there might be elements of frustration from how that first round ended. But there we go, three of them are here. Now one of them has fallen down bot mode, committing suicide, taking himself out of the equation. I'm quite sure still if this is still... I mean, they still have hold of the soul. This is all that matters really for them. They are really just building on this huge lead, very much uncontested so oh! far. Hello. And one by one, they are just falling down, going in. It's insane, right? How we had an 11 minute round before, and because of just this rock solid defense, 80% in two and a half minutes. Oh, Saigib, that, the unstoppable at the moment. That is the seesaw effect of sacrifice. It's either going to be a long round or it's going to be a three minute round. It's looking like if they get protection, I think that's going to be a done deal. See no, it does go to unlovables. Zcap hasn't got a huge amount of stack, though, to be honest. He'll be quite vulnerable to that group attack. He has enough, and he does have some teammates here. There's those two health bubbles. Very important to collect those. Wow. Yeah, Kane doing work with the shotgun. Now, they were able to use the protection to sort of seize the soul, but they're going to have to naturally defend it without it, which might be quite tricky, seeing as they're so far behind, but it's always possible with sacrifice. Fly in, just the last little remnants of that protection gonna run out and pit using that time wisely to go straight back. And now we might even be at the end of this first map if they can't bring this back immediately, but it looks like they might struggle to as frag after frag is just popping up for no lives matter. One percent left to go. I think this might be it. Wow, just like that. Two straight rounds. And the second round was very dominant indeed. And I think that might have been just a, a direct knock-on effect to how close that first round was. And the fact that No Lives Matter got a really good start. They were clearly really buzzed from the previous round they just played. I think that was um, one of those things that can be expected. You know, when you see those really close comebacks be made, uh, the team that comes off better in those exchanges tends to be the one that is... Uh, the snowball begins in the round prior, and then when the next round happens, it just continues to carry over, right? I think that's pretty much uh, a direct example of what we just saw. Yeah, I think I could agree with that for sure. But that first map being off the table, Tempo Shrine, I mean, this is the, the, the last map that No Lives Matter played in their Losers Finals before going into Grand Finals. So they definitely were 100% warmed up. And after that, such a close, like, I believe it was 98 to 98 during that final exchange. So it's practically 99 to 99. Very close. Um, but, I mean, I, I think it's quite fitting how a round ended up that way after we were just talking before about how, you know... Um, do you see a team win around like that? You know, when they're, they're forced to contest and they're running in one at a time. Because almost we did see that happen. You know, I think if Unlovables were able to win that round, they probably would have ended up winning the map themselves anyway. Um, but I think that's kind of the extreme of what can happen if a round is ending that way. When the players are forced to contest, they're forced to run in. It's just gauntlet after gauntlet because no one can afford to go for weapons. They have no choice but to go straight for the point or straight for the obelisk. And uh, I mean, it looks like such an impossible situation to come back from. We almost saw it and then the protection appeared. And then the second brick turned up. It was pretty much a done deal, but going into Ruins of Sarnath. I mean, this is quite a good turnaround here. If Lone Ives Matter win this map, it will be a bracket reset. And we'll go into another classical two out of three between these two teams. But I feel like if, if we're able to see the direct effects of uh, just a comeback being made in a round and how No Ives Matter can take that and, and basically run away with that momentum, if they can reset the bracket, that's pretty much next level momentum. That's both momentum for one team and a wake up call for the other. Unlovables are definitely the favorites in this tournament. They were able to defeat No Lives Matter in the winner's bracket, I believe. Um, so essentially going into this grand finals, it's a bit of a, that might've just been quite a, almost like a splash of cold water in Unlovables face, right? That they need to start, they need to step that game up. They need to maintain that level that we, we know they're capable of maintaining. I just quite like the, the, the many different results that can happen on that though, right? Because you, you say, right, it is a bit of a wake-up call for the team that has effectively just had the bracket reset on them. But that's why I, I like how it's called a bracket reset because that is 100% what it is. You are resetting things back to 0-0 zero, zero, because in this situation, if No Lives Matter are able to take this map and they reset the bracket, they are going to be 1-1 one, one in this tournament currently, you know, because uh, obviously Unlovable will speak them in winners and No Lives Matter would have effectively just tied things up there and then in the loser's bracket. So No Lives Matter will get that momentum bush of, okay, right, we can do this, we can take a set off them, we just have to do it again. And then Unlovables will have it to go, okay, right, now we're back to the playing field, we have to step it up. I think it does such a good job of just setting everything back to neutral again. So, 15 seconds left on this warm-up, a very, very vital map for both teams, but I think this would be quite a fast turnaround um, if they're able to sort of win the 
win this map as well. Uh, I think Tempest Shrine, that second round, definitely went a lot faster than I think, to be honest, any of us were expecting, especially seeing as our levels are the favorites of this tournament so far. But here we go, Ruins of Sarnath. Uh, the American teams and Sacrifice had quite a high success rate on this map, I find. I think it's going to be Seacat back on that scale barrier. We saw him do that before, and a tremendous success, so it's easy to comfortable on, 100%. This is that vital stage, Brick going down. Actually, uh, lots of members of No Lives Matter going down at the stage, meaning there's no way they're going to be able to challenge the Soul Cave getting two gauntlets too. Early on, very impressive stuff. But also, this definitely would have been a map choice of the Unlovables. We've already seen them play on it, but no, it gets oh, stolen no. away! That is the worst kind of result you can have when you're trying to go for that first capture that you die steps away from the Obelisk. I mean, bot mode, pr bot mode pretty much went all in there. Uh, where the, the idea was probably to try and use the rocket jump to um, blast above everybody and then get the drop off. Even if he died there, so what? At least they were going to get the Obelisk they wanted. Unfortunately, because he'd done damage to himself before he got there, he pretty much just made their life a lot easier, but here comes Sen that quad damage and now they're gonna have a nice little defense here doomslayer has that very impressive stack and now he's got lots of damage to come through oh, oh. there brick yeah oh, goodbye brick what you can do about that quad damage is gonna wear off soon but unlovable is managing to establish a strong start with it at the very least that sort of exchange the ball rush gonna be coming up but no only about to die, Seacap just falls. I actually really like that positioning from Sen, even though he was so consistently nearly dead. I like his positioning to actually catch the two attackers off guard. So even if he hasn't got much health, if they can't see him, obviously they, they can't do damage to him. So very good little bit of defense right there. A very strong defense. It looks like Unlovables are consistently just able to position themselves that it's really hard for No Lives Matter to take out multiple of them at the same time. And that first power up now off the cards. We've got to chase this out, and Brick is going to be falling down for it. Well, being so close to the rocket launcher near this obelisk as well kind of gives you the luxury of when you make the, the sequence back to try and maybe take the mega health or whatever, um, you're pretty much able to deny the rocket launcher from a lot of people. You know, if they're fresh off the spawn, and clearly the rocket launcher is a very prominent weapon for sacrifice in general, especially since the patch. Denying that weapon from the enemy team is very, very important indeed, but soon we're going to see the power up appear, but. The attacks coming through for No Lives Matter, but they're going to have to make that choice. If they don't get the soul now, they're going to have to once more probably split their attention. You know, do we go for both the soul and the power-up? Do we dedicate to one or the other? They've got to make that choice, and they've got to make it in eight seconds. It's quickly escaping, though. A big exchange room there. Seacap able to salvage the end of it. So much damage coming through. The fight for this power-up is strong, but... It is a fact protection and it goes to Brick. This is a good turning point that Nellis Man might be able to make the most out of here, but it all depends on how Brick can survive. So there he does uh, only just now have that injection back up, so it's going to be very difficult to take out. Well, clearly fighting there wasn't even his main focus. It was wait for the attack to happen, slip the net when everyone's attention is diverted, capture the soul at a later date. And I feel like, you know, that's, that's it. He's, he's now fighting now, he's dropped the soul off. But before then, you know, just staying alive was the mission. Now we can start racking up those frags. Oh, until it inevitably, yeah, until it inevitably runs out and you can't survive a bull rush. Kind of all or nothing, Hail Mary, this is my final attack kind of thing, right? He gets low enough and, well, if I die with this, it's only 30 seconds that comes back again. You can't afford to be very explosive with those bull rushes, I think, thanks for that short cooldown. It's a very generous cooldown, you know, considering that Ruins of Sarnath in particular has a lot of cooldown shards too. And there's plenty of means on this map to get your ability back in record time. It's why we see champions like Clutch use so consistently here. Well, is being surrounded. He's got very little damage on the sea cap there before. Oh! Send flying in from behind. Fists ready. Looking to fight. Can't survive long enough to uh, get the soul out there, though. So I give with that Berserk punch just moments before he gets the soul captured. Oh, a lot of damage coming out on pit here. One health. Only one HP left. Oof! Rocket launcher. All it's going to take there. A little bit of damage in any way would have done that. No lives matter though. 58%, almost 60. I mean, they're doing it again, Mustard. They're doing it again. Oh. How are they going to constantly find themselves so severely down at percentage, but always seem to be able to make it work anyway? How do you feel comfortable with a lead? How do you feel safe with a lead against a team like that? When they are over and over again proving that they can win despite those differences in percentage. I mean, currently, yes, our love balls are in the lead, but with how fast percentage is climbing, 
how long exactly bot mode has gone. Yeah, damage. damage might do a good job of saying a thing or two about that. Definitely. However, one thing teams are, one thing you're going to have to be used to doing as a team in Sacrifice is just that. How do you manage the power-up when it's not in your favor? Psygib with two of the most crucial Berserk punches I think I've ever seen. One on the quad damage and one on the soul carrier. When he was going so fast, if he missed that punch, he was probably going to escape and get out of his reaches. Two fantastically well-placed punches. Doom Slayer really seems to be one of the best team players so far. I mean, such a, a crucial amount of utility, right? That Berserk using it for something like that. Secure frags, be very aggressive, be really just attack with it. At the same time, loads of mobility, loads of defensive options. Just such a strong champion, especially in the hands of someone like Psykip that clearly knows what they're doing. Yeah, he's been a very significant part of his team um, because of reasons just like that, but they have the soul back. Currently behind, oh, but he's very surrounded here. Still though, pick game taken out is going to be huge. Gets a little bit of damage on Effortless before ultimately dying, but Effortless needs to be cleared up by his team. But a lot of frags coming through for No Lives Matter. Seacap going to take out Brick, but Saigim pushing him off anyway. Now Pit, run back through, get that capture. Now 90%, No Lives Matter might be able to still win this round despite that huge deficit at the start. Now they did take a lot of damage to go through there. I mean, they did eat a couple of gauntlets, even though they inevitably did manage to get that frag. But Saigim with another two very important frags. Can't get one more, unfortunately, but I don't even think it matters. They're now put in another position they have to pile in. But do they even have the time? I don't think so. Is that going to be another round? It is. No lives matter. Looking really strong. And this is reset point. They've won three rounds straight to Unlovables. Unlovables are yet to get a notch on the board what in the grand on? finals. I mean, it's an adjustment. No lives matter. They've made it work. They found something that is working out for them so far. I mean, what can you say about that? Three rounds straight against the team that sent them to losers in the first place. One more round, we've got a bracket reset. But they'll be going into the bracket reset with four rounds in a row. I mean, the thing is, we haven't really seen this in competitive sacrifice. In these double elimination brackets where the reset happens, I mean, we don't often see the bracket actually get reset. So you wonder what that's going to do to the team on the receiving end. You know, this is going to be one of those breakout moments where we see what we so rarely see. And if you're the team that's pulled off that, big accomplishment in resetting a bracket, you've got to be feeling great. But if you're the team that gets reset, potentially four rounds straight, that's going to be a massive knock on your morale and you're going to have to take time to think about it. They've got the start again, no lives matter. It's going to be 10% at least before the power-up even appears. Here we go. This is a great start for these guys. Well, Unlovables did manage to get it. It was, in fact, the quad damage. Sin has it, but dies immediately. So you have a team no effortless, it would pick it up, but dies too. This really is that curse of the quad damage. You will uh, probably get at least one or two frags before you die, but you will die. There's, there's very little you can do about that. You become public oh. at number one and just executed in the air. Knocked in the air by Bull Rush and then finished off by the rail. That was a really nice two-piece combo right there, but no lives matter. They have the lead, and it's, it's pretty much what we saw in Tempest Shrine, where they had a really good start. They're defending it superbly. On Tempest Shrine, that second round was quite dominant indeed almost 100 to zero you wonder are they going to follow suit and keep this going this has been a great defense so far but with the power up running out we'll find out how they can manage without it in the second round almost 40 percent already and this this is the same thing we saw in the first map you know not as matter they won the first round and then just steamrolled far and away in the future and that's exactly what's happening again here however a couple of people have unlovables they do get a nice triple here they've already stolen the soul away this is a much better return for them their final round, at least just before the bracket reset. Bot mode very low, it's going to be hard for them to get through. The injection pop, oh, oh no, no, the bounce is too high and he can't pick it up. And, and Pit uh, catches some serious air. I'm actually kind of surprised to see Pit still got taken out even though he was that high up in the air. I don't actually have ever seen Slash go that high before. Kane's got to be very careful how he picks his moment. There's plenty of people there looking to head him off. Does get the drop off, but he's super weak. Wow, Seacap cleans up. He's going to get one, but then it looked like he died almost instantly. Some of the are now starting to build that percentage on the board. Very starved for weapons right now, it seems. Players you know, fresh off that spawn, they have to decide. Do they go for a weapon or do they go straight into the fight? <laughs> so I tried to catch him in the air with the Agorna right there, kind of meeting a super shotgun for his troubles. At the end of the day, this is such an important this is such an important defense for unlovables. You know, it, it's just beyond anything else is making sure they're able to defend. You know, they've had such a hard time, seemingly, surprisingly, they've had a really hard time in, in both of these maps. But now they have the core damage as well, and it's starting to turn around. Things are looking better. That's a lot of damage, though. Normally falling down, but Kane doing well now. 
to stabilize. I mean, 30% to 45, there's still a lot of chance here, but here comes that Doom Slayer. Effortless gets the quad, but with 8 HP, he was definitely going to die at a moment's notice. It's quite hard to call, to be honest. I love the balls. I mean, just as quickly, I've been able to bring it back and able to slightly take the lead now for the first time here in this round. Only just. A big kill feed. All of the team dead. No, that's yep. Matt with a complete wipe. That's a team wipe right there. And I actually love the fact that Effortless didn't even want to risk them sort of catching him off the spawn. Actually, just like that, funny enough, that was a lovely rocket, by the way. But this idea that Effortless goes right, if they're going to respawn closer to the Obelisk because we have wiped their team, he was going to go for the saw lag speed boost off the rocket boost right there. And that's all he wanted. But that was really good by Kate. Using the plasma trail to sort of paint. If they wanted to try and contest the soul, they actually would have had to put themselves massively in harm's way. They kind of had no choice but to let him throw the soul there and waste a little bit of extra time. All of that. Pitt was able to control that soul properly, keep it very unpredictable as to where he was going to go. Now he's painted around that plasma trail. This is some stability given to No Lives Matter uh, again. Not as dominant as we saw on Tempest Shrine, but they are starting to bring things like bot mode just... At this point, I don't, I don't think they even care about dominance. They just want stability. They just want to win. Like, it doesn't matter if it's a stomp. It doesn't matter if it's by the skin of their teeth. A win is a win. That's what they need. Definitely. Just send them to Dreamhack Winter. Hits confident in his team's ability to defend. I think he has to make sure he's got one eye on the obelisk and one eye on the power up at this stage. He's going so far down the line. If Pitt's able to at least fight for it, I don't think he was quite ready to be ambushed there, though. There's the plasma trail is going to make this protection a little bit hard to see. His C-Cap oh. has access to it. He's quite weak. If he gets this Mega, though, that's when he becomes a real threat. And he has collected Mega. Well, they did get the protection and the Mega health, and they now also have the Soul. This could be a good opportunity for another horse to turn this around again. Not a huge lead, you know, 82 versus 60. It's, 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 it's workable, for sure. If you've got protection and a nice chunk of it left, plenty of time to make oh. magic happen. I think what's going to let him down is he only really has a shotgun, and even then, he has one bullet. He has ran out of shots. Seacap has a protection, but no ammo. Again, just picked up a rocket launcher. That will do for a few, but Effortless will take him out anyway. But another balls were able to get a little bit more on the board, but oh, they've still lost the soul again. Pit's going to die. Psygib, get a nice kill with that Berserk too. Two frags again going the way of unlovables. They're bringing things back though, definitely. It's this, it's this sort of this group attack that Nice Matter have been quite often sort of putting forward. They're making sure that in a lot of these fights they have both the numbers advantage, and I think they're just picking out the right targets at the right time. Actually, look at the order of some of these guys going down. Oh, this is so hard to call. Unlovable was 1% ahead now. Just the one, but I mean it's there. But that means they've had it for two seconds extra. That is just non-existent. But I feel like this is one of the this is one of the most important one percents that Unlovables have played for in Sacrifice so far because this is reset point. You know, if they lose this round, we go back to essentially a zero zero. Unlovables do not want to give No Lives Matter this safety net. But I feel like as things get closer, it's becoming more likely. Five percent, and we're gonna have a bracket reset, and it's looking like it could very much happen. We've approached that point. They have no choice but to run in full steam ahead and contest. But they are dying on the way one at a time. They had no more options. And that is going to be a bracket reset, ladies and gentlemen. We are going back to 0 0 in this grand finals now, where we're going to go down to one final best two out of three. And the winner will go to Dreamhack Winter, and the loser, unfortunately, will stay home. That's going to be quite a crazy turnaround, to be honest with you, because Unlovables have been looking so strong going into this tournament, getting into grand finals. They looked pretty much untouchable by the teams involved, but no lives matter. They've done a great job of showing us how they can take that momentum and essentially run away with it. They showed us that on Tempest Shrine. They've done the same thing on Ruins of Sarnath. Very excited to see what happens now the reset has taken place. It's a means for them to stay in this fight, but this is also going to be a wake-up call for Unlovables. I'm going back to a 0-0. Zero, zero. While we get this underway, we're going to go for a quick break, but don't go anywhere because the bracket reset will kick off after this short break.